I got started in college, probably first introduced in uh, high school, but uh, probably didn't, not until my third year in college, did I uh, take my first ceramics class from a very good art instructor at the University of Northern Colorado. And that's when I fell in love with ceramics and uh, probably just couldn't take enough classes. And I was fascinated with the, with the material. I think just knowing more about it and then just being shown technique. And then from that I could, could uh, express what I wanted it to express for me. And, and uh, yeah, as soon as I graduated from college, after a show in college, then I was able to uh, start it you know, I started a teaching career, full-time teaching career. And uh, then in the summers, I would have that time to, to give to uh, ceramics. And that was kind of my part-time job after, after uh, I was done teaching for the teaching time. So I teach part-time, so I do more ceramics now. Kind of reversed it after I retired about 11 years ago. And um, yeah, I... Uh, I asked to be in Vista College uh, University, Buena Vista University uh, is where I was doing my ceramics even while I was in Storm Lake. And uh, they allowed me to use the kiln and I would take either classes from the professor or I would teach classes part-time. I would teach art education classes for Buena Vista. Those that were art majors wanted to teach. So um, I was a teacher and they, would, they came to my uh, Storm Lake High School classes in the evening and I would, I would you know, give them what I knew. And then in the summers, then Buena Vista would give me some space in their studio to work. So when I retired, I asked them, well, what do you think? Can I uh, hang around and do some of this? And they said, yes. So I'm really thankful for that. It really is, uh, they have gas kilns, which I'm very interested in atmospheric firing, um, not only the you know, the material of clay, but then the firing process, glazing, firing, uh, they, that allowed me to, to add that into it as well. So I would say I use about a dozen glazes in combinations, sometimes more than one or two or three on a, of glazes on one piece. And uh, I use a lot of porcelain slip underneath the glaze on my stoneware pieces and, um, and my uh, stoneware slash porcelain pieces. So I use two clay bodies, but porcelain is, a, is one of the main things I decorate with. And then other uh, oxides, um, metallic oxides, cobalt, uh, iron oxide, titanium, which is rutile. Those are, you know, I put them on as slips and they, they glaze through the cut through the glaze or they they burn through the glaze and produce other colors and other uh, variations so yeah glazing is is a big part of what I do it's kind of the final uh, both decorating and glazing is kind of puts a kind of the, the final touch yeah this is three different glazes here these are this is the porcelain here and in here this is iron there's some rutile coming through here as well. And then three different glazes. There's a copper red. Here's a uh, kind of a blue uh, uh, type of a glaze, blue-green glaze. It's a uh, ash glaze, actually. And then this is just a matte, a very, very common, been used for, for probably 100 years or more. Uh, it's a Cushing matte, it's called. So yeah, those are the kinds of things I like to do. Uh, recently, I've, I've kind of done some, I saw, well, a lot of these pieces right in here are kind of good examples of it. Uh, I just saw a corn broom in the corner of the, that we used to sweep up, you know, different things in the, in the studio at, at Buena Vista. I just said, well, what the heck, on wet slip, I was doing some things with the wet slip, just kind of manipulating it. So while it was still wet, I would uh, just brush through it with this big broom, lay it on the table and take this big broom. And, and since then, I've uh, uh, 
purchase other smaller kind of whisk brooms, corn brooms, and then I, you know, make them look old or make them so they're a little more irregular, not just straight stiff. So I cut them to, to kind of gravitate towards that. And then I use that on some of the smaller pieces and I've got a, an array of those. So that's kind of, I don't know, I would call that a recent direction or uh, I enjoy doing that. So from, through, to, so those, that just kind of explains to me the creative process. Um, clay comes from the earth and I'm inspired by nature and uh, creation, I would call it. And I'm, I'm also inspired by the, the one who created <laughs> us, the earth. So, um, uh, and I'm an image bearer of that and I wanna imitate, you know, what I see my creator do, so. Uh, I'm inspired by colors of that. Uh, firing in an atmospheric kiln allows some of that natural color because clay and glaze are, are just, they are, their origin, origin is stone and it's just broken down or it's been processed. And uh, that when it's fired to a maturing temperature, the, the clay hardens and the glaze melts and it becomes like a liquid, like a glass coating. And it's just manipulating that. And an atmospheric kiln, that means I can control um, burning of the fuel and it allows, you know, the carbon to come into it, carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, that interacts with the glaze and produces a warmer color palette. It also, the mats become um, just more touchable. A lot of times mats in, a, in an oxidation firing, like an electric kiln, mats can get very abrasive and you know, not as easy to touch. So the, the atmospheric firing allows that and it's closer to nature to me, just the, the firing process. Always experimenting. I'm, my work is very free and loose as you can see some of the brushwork and but it's also complemented or contrasted to control. Um, I like good craftsmanship and workmanship. So that, that, that final touch and, you know, I put a splash, I'll just take the brush and just throw it and splash it onto, you can kind of see some of that. That's the very free part. And that, that adds a lot of emotion and expression to the work. And that's balanced by you know, the control, the trimming underneath, just uh, finishing of it. Um, I want it to be well, well made and well crafted. So uh, to me, I like that combination. That gives me the, the effect that I want and I want to share with others. It, to me, it gives it a lot, of, a lot of joy and a lot of, I don't know, freedom and gives life to it. And that's, if I can share those with others. So that's the from, the through is the firing it goes through, um, the, the experimentation that I go through, um, a lot of, you know, that's the creative process. There's a lot of decisions that are made. You just, pretty soon they're intuitive and uh, you just, it's what you eventually just do. And then uh, uh, the, fr the, the two is why I make it. Are from and through and to are all the whys of creative process, but I make it for people to put in the, into their daily lives so they can take this and, you know, use it. it some people, you know, it, it's probably more expensive than something you go to the store and buy, but it's also, you've got to consider how much time and hand, it's hand done. Um, but as artwork, I think this is probably, ceramics a little more affordable. So... And that's part of the philosophy of the East, Eastern philosophy that I, I gravitate towards is, is that kind of thing. So I would say uh, find somebody to learn with or under, take some classes, take some, learn from others. And uh, yeah, the internet is available to look up things and get on YouTube today. That, that's, a, that's a great use, but the direct you know, you have to get involved somewhere and work. And, uh, but yeah.
just find somebody to work under. Um, I had great privilege of doing that in my start and, you know, just throughout my career working with others. I think it's through towards the end of 26, August 26, something like that. I think it's a Saturday and we'll be taking it down. So, yeah, it's going to be up a good long time. I hope people come and see it. Everything's for sale. It's got a price on it. Just, yeah, feel free to come on in and look at, pick up most of the smaller pieces and, you know, there's a price on the bottom or whatever and see what it, see what you think. If you can put it into your life, I'd be really privileged to, and honored that you could do that. So they can get a hold of me in Storm Lake, Storm Lake, Iowa. Uh, I have several galleries besides Arts on Grant. And um, so I have a website. You can look that up and you'd, you'd see, uh, I do have an online store at that site. So I don't have all of this on there, but I have a, a selection on there. And you could just contact me after that if you, if you wanted to see more. We could communicate and talk over uh, any way you wanted. Phone, text, um, you know, I could send you images or that'd be great. I just want to thank uh, Arts on Grand for having us here, having me here, inviting me. And it's been about 10 years since I've had a show with someone here uh, that long ago. And I've, um, yeah, it's been great. Uh, I want to thank my wife, Deb, and my family for supporting me, letting me do this. Well, you know, so thank you.